Polite Inquiries, Oval. Sir Crick follow says, look at the entire Ashes as a whole. Can it be said that the bowling unit of both teams dominated the batting? Yes. Well, there is no batting in this series, to be fair, so yes. Don't say there's been batting. Don't defend your is friends. England's You're always defending your friends. Batting the worst of any side to have won the Ashes in a period that you can remember is me. It's inept and terrible, and they could win. They could still end up 3-1 up in this series if there's a lot of rain. So it's phenomenal that you can bat that bad and uh, win an Ashes so comfortably. Dave Brown says, what is the appropriate Brownie. amount of love for Nathan Lyon? Uh, quite a lot of love, but it's not physical. He's the greatest off-spinner Australia has ever had. I think he might be better. Um, Tim May might have been better. Oh, natural talent, but he, Tim May never got a chance to play, so when, he, he didn't get tested enough. He bowled really well, um, but I do think that England played... So he's a traditional off-spinner. Correct. And a few years ago in English cricket, there used to be dozens. They played him like blind men who had never seen traditional off-spinners. I don't want to take anything away from him. What I'm saying is the batsman that faced him had no eyes. Ashton says, is Peter Siddle the new, new, new Glenn McGrath? I think he's the new, new, new Peter Siddle at this point. He's bowled really well. He's not bowling like he was bowling when they dropped him, I don't think. Yeah, and I think that's fair to remember because there was a reason he, he got dropped. He, by, by the end of his South Africa tour, he just he, he looked about as penetrative as, you know, George's eyes. He, he looked odd with the other Australian bowlers who basically, you know, let's be honest, have just sort of splattered it around wherever they can. He's right there all the time. I wasn't really listening. I was concentrating on looking penetrating. Cricketing View says, Cook's Ashes record in England, 829 runs at 29.6. It's not very good in Australia, apart from that one series. So this is his sixth series, and I think he's averaging, he's probably averaging about 34 in this one now. His record against Australia, which is kind of the yardstick by which England batsmen are judged, whether it should be or not, is modest. His record should be far better than it is. Is he a great accumulator, though? I mean, you would never say he's a great batsman. Yeah, a great accumulator is okay. Yep. But that's kind of like saying he's a sexy calculator. Neil Leon says, I am confused after five tests. I don't really know which of these two are the better side. I think that's completely fair. I'm not sure any of us I'm really I'm not sure they do. know at this point. England is obviously the better side in English conditions. And if they go and play in Australia now, I'm sure Australia would win. If they played in neutral conditions, who would win if they played in India now? I think Australia would. Where would be neutral? South Africa. It's halfway between the two, isn't it? In terms of pitches. Look, it's a very good Ireland. question. Switzerland. I, I'm just naming countries now. Andorra. Sure, that's a country? I thought that was a sweater. <laughs> Jack Mandel says, could Ali open when live is in inevitably dropped? Yeah, he could. Well, wait a minute. Are we sure live should be dropped? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. He's a better player than he's shown. Yeah. So could Moeen open in the UAE? Yep. But he's well, not going to open long term, so that seems to me like a very odd decision. Alex Hale's a possibility. I think Zafat Ansari is an outside possibility. I'm not saying it should happen. I'm saying it might. The other one... Gary Balance should be opening for Yorkshire at the moment. I don't know what Yorkshire are doing. They should be having Gary Balance at the top of the order. That's what England need. The Roman Nose says, why should I have any faith in this England team? Two of the five tests have been absolute massacres. Because they've won three. But, I mean, you're, <laughs> right, you're right not to have much faith. I think you've just got to keep remembering it's really early in the development process of the England side. There are, I mean, if, if you ashes, look at the two teams, no one, one is coming down and one is going up. Yeah. So you have to, you should have a little bit more faith but in But they're England. going up like this. Damien says, Australia lost the Test Series, not bothering to bat out to day four at Cardiff. Day they five, didn't bother, did they? It wasn't like the uh, casino. No. They kind of lost it beforehand when they picked Brad Haddon and then he dropped the catch he should have taken. That made a big difference. I mean, Broad Nansen had a really good spell of bowling. I thought they bowled really well. And Australia doesn't handle our slow pitches very well. It wasn't that they didn't bother, though, was it? Really, it really wasn't. Old man Haddon probably did drop the ashes. Liam says, will Balance's innings at Cardiff be the most significant forgotten Ashes 50? That's really good question. It is a good question. So he we'll was see dropped. you tomorrow. Oh. Really? No. <laughs> he was dropped after four innings. And the first one of the series was actually a match-defining partnership with Joe Root. They put on 150 odd, he scored 60. He was the second top scorer in the top five at Lords, and they dropped him. He's, he's in the top ten in history to get to a thousand test runs. I think Gary, Gary Ballard's been treated very badly. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs>